Barefoot started in 1964. My first memories of it was, it started in our homes. My mother driving a Volkswagen Beetle, traveling out to the weaving centers, of which there, I think there were three at that time. Uh, one of them involved a ferry crossing, so that was exciting. We would sometimes be picked up after school from St. Joseph's in Maradana, and then we'd go to the uh, yarn depot on Dean's Road to go and choose yarns. Um, you know, I've grown up with this thing for, gosh, for a long time. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's been a happy journey and a fun journey, a bit chaotic too, but that's, that's all right. My name is Oshira Sansoni. Um, my grandmother Barbara started Barefoot about 55 years ago in 1964. Um, my memory doesn't really come into play um, till sort of the mid 90s. Um, and it was nothing like it is today. It was still, I think, yeah, it was quite different to now. Barefoot's always grown very organically. There's never been any big sort of big plan for it. When we began, I think we were much smaller. What I mean by smaller is the number of looms we had were fewer. And it's now grown. Um, it's grown, we now, we weave more fabric. We weave in more diff different locations. in the mid-90s we didn't we didn't really have a big cafe um, the art gallery was very different in a different building um, there was um, Dominic still had a huge dark room which my sister and I would always go creep into after school and his assistant um, would very kindly put up with us allowing us to peer at different of his photo photography slides um, there was one time I think we just started the cafe or it was literally one table or something and I remember a family friend asking me why I was running around barefoot over the place. And I looked at him and was like, well, because it's called Barefoot, silly. <laughs> so, you know. Um, but yeah, I grew up in it. I was always sort of surrounded, immersed in the sort of this, this, in arts and design. And my grandmother was always talking to us about color and how important color was. Um, we used to go and visit the head office and they would, and we'd, probably terrorized our poor old dye master, a lovely old gentleman called Jeremy Margin. Um, Jeremy Margin, who um, was the sweetest, kindest uh, gentleman, and he looked after all the colored yarn, and my sister and I would terrorize him and jump all over it. <laughs> This side of it, the space that you've come to look at in Colombo, has changed enormously. Um, I'm delighted that my wife Nazreen could start the gallery again. It first began in the early 1960s and ran from a beautifully built, um, custom built uh, space for it, which was done by a man called Ulrich Plessner, an architect who worked with Jeffrey. And then we started again in the mid 90s on the Gore Road. So we added a gallery. The bookshop became much larger, and I think that's a very important part of this space over here. The cafe started with a single table. I think we had a lime juice and a Chinese roll. I'm not sure whether we had anything else. And that's evolved as well. I think that's true of everything that's happened with Barefoot. It's been, if you think we've had some great big business plan, we haven't. 
It's just grown and evolved as time has gone by. It's just always been, it's sort of, it hasn't, as a child or as a teenager here, sometimes you don't always focus on it too much, but it's always been sort of the baseline of my life in a way, um, always sort of thrumming in the background. So a lot of our lives just sort of centered around here. Later on when I was a teenager, we would have um, Barefoot during the early, early to mid, late 2000s was the, the hub for a lot of different sort of very exciting cultural, social, um, I guess, events. really wonderful. We'd have these amazing jazz concerts. Um, people like Jerome Speldwin, Glenn Terry and others would come and perform and um, everyone, it was, just, it was just an amazing musical, a wonderful time for everyone to come and um, be together. It's sort of, like I said, it's sort of the foundation, it's this, it's the baseline, it's this, it's the center of, it's the center of a lot of my, a lot of aspects of my life. This is where a lot of my family is, it's people I've grown up around, it's definitely shaped me and who I, who I am, uh, am today. Um, it's given me an appreciation for so many different things, for, for design, for art, for hard work, for the people that, that, the amazing amount of people that are behind this establishment to put it on and so wherever, whenever you go to any place whether you're visiting a restaurant or a cafe or a museum and you, you, you not only look at whether it's the work or enjoy the experience but you also then have an appreciation for the amount of the, the people behind the scenes who've put that together and um, I think that's, you know, I think that's really important to realize is that or to remember is that there's a lot of hard work that goes into you know, putting on, to putting on these things. Most of my time now is spent working with the space over here. So it's working with retail, it's working with people, it's working with visitors who come to see what we do, to the store, to the gallery, to the bookshop, to come and have lunch, to come and have a party, whatever. When I go back to the weaving centers, and one of them especially, it's like suddenly you enter a zone of um, meditative peace. Because that's where I, the core of what we do happens. I think, I think we have to remind ourselves that what we're really about is designing cloth, which is what my mother began with, the design, and the use of color. My mother's never been a weaver. I don't think she's woven a single inch of cloth in a whole lifetime. She's an artist, she records things, she documents th works. But the weaving centers to me are the most magical place because it goes back to what it's really all about. We've got our designs, which are of course our own and generated by a wonderful team of designers, some of who've been with us for many years, some have joined us more recently. But you go back to the basics, you go back to just trying to weave cloth beautifully and well. And to do that you have to dye your yarn well. Um, I, it's, I just, when I go to the weaving centre I don't want to return to Colombo. I'd be very happy to stay there. They even have a bed for me at the weaving centre in case I just want to stay the night.
Currently, I sort of manage the art gallery. Um, so I used to, um, when I moved back from Australia, I decided it was time to get involved in the family business for a while, because um, I'd been away for about six or seven years pursuing my degree and then working in Australia. And um, I got involved, I started working with my mother in the art gallery. Um, she was, she's the one who started the gallery in its modern incarnation, I think in the mid 90s, and really sort of propelled it to where it is today. Um, she's a very big factor in that. So, I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, the, the Barefoot Gallery is probably the oldest contemporary art gallery in um, Colombo. And um, she's uh, been a big drive behind that. Barefoot and Barefoot was a big, you know, big part of that inspiration for me, being able to work in sort of the arts, because I'd seen, I'd grown up seeing my father. Um, he was a, used to be a full-time photographer. Unfortunately, now Barefoot's taken up too much of his time, so he's had to pull back on his photography. Um, and my grandmother being an artist and designer, my house is, the family home is filled with um, her artwork, my father's photography, and also um, various, um, um, the artworks of all family friends um, who were just coming, who were in and out of our lives, um, who have who've been just amazing artists around Sri Lanka. joined, I worked part-time. My profession is as a photographer. I was very fortunate. The people who managed the company then and were in charge of it allowed me the freedom to travel. The travel was done both, I traveled all over the island and I still try to do so. I also traveled the world. I was sent off on various assignments. But in the end, it's that team of people I work with, I think are what I enjoy best. Um, yes, it can be tumultuous sometimes, it can be a bit dramatic. Uh, I think I can be very difficult to work with. I've got an awful temper um, and I can be very impatient. how he's able to capture a moment. He's, he's done so many different things. He was a, he did, I think he hates me calling us, but he was a photojournalist for a while. He's done, um, he's done so many different uh, parts of work, um, different, photo different photography. Um, but my favorite has always been the way he captures other human beings. He's, there's something about him as a photographer when he goes up to, he's, a natural storyteller and a very warm person and he's able to get even the most, he's able to go into a place and charm everyone and he's able to get such lovely portraits of people. They're always very relaxed, very gentle, just very, yeah, very relaxed. I think that's really hard. As someone who's camera shy, um, um, I really admire how he's able to go in to do that with people. And I think the way he captures a human, the captures somebody in that image um, and it says it's just yeah I think he's I, I love the way he renders people got the cafe that has grown, is one managed by a wonderful man called Tony. And the cafe too, we've done it on, we did it with a very particular vision. Uh, it shouldn't be too smart, it shouldn't be too slick. As a photographer, when I traveled and I would work hard, you'd, you'd be out early morning taking pictures, you're on your feet nearly all day. And sometimes you just need a place where you can sit down, 
relax and just have a break. And so that's very much the thinking of the cafe that we run today. It's in a garden. We're fortunate to have this oasis in the middle of Colombo, but it's a place where anyone should be able to come and relax. We're not waiting for you to buy five bottles of wine or three bottles of champagne or to drink 10 coffees. We would be delighted if you did so, but it's also a place we can come, feel secure, feel happy and feel at peace. My name's Tony. I'm English from the UK. I uh, am married to a Sri Lankan lady who was born in England. It's a little oasis within Colombo. So you have the, uh, the trains thundering down that way and then you have Gore Road, you have the buses thundering down Gore Road and here you just have the tranquility of the cafe. It's just beautiful. It's a joy to walk in every morning. Sometimes you feel like people are trying to rush you out the door or you shouldn't hang around there for long. And so the biggest compliment is when people tell us they love that they can come to our space and feel like they can spend hours and no one's chasing them away. And it's a place they can relax and sort of, it's a little oasis in Colombo that they can hide away from sort of the, um, uh, the hustle and bustle and the traffic. And um, I think that's what's really wonderful about it. We're very much about customer service. I do feel that it's not so much, I mean, accounts may disagree, but it's not about the money. It's about the, the people being satisfied and walking out of here happy. And I think a lot of that comes through communication. Um, if there is, for instance, a delay, communicate the delay so that people know and they can make their own decision as to whether they stay or whether they go, if they've only got an hour for lunch, for instance. And plus it's a destination. We have a beautiful shop, we have the lovely gallery, so it's a lot easier for me to sort of say, well, I'm sorry, I have no tables, but please, please feel free to go into the gallery or the shop and I'll come and get you when your table's available. So there's a lot of aspects to it which does help it make it uh, a destination. Again, I think I mainly worked as a travel photographer. I would be sent off to go and photograph a country, photograph a city, photograph a group of islands. Um, and that took me to, I once on a plane had nothing to do and I counted up how many places I'd been to on assignment. And I think it was about 40 different countries. I can't even remember half of them now. Um, and, and that was it. I also was photographing architecture. I had friends who were reporters and once they came home, picked me up and said, oh Dominic, could you please just bring your camera bag? They took me to the PETA and dropped me in the middle of a riot. Um, it was a very fast learning experience. <laughs> Within about five minutes I was on my knees, tear gassed. I'd never experienced that before. And but it changed my life for many years because suddenly rather than being someone who watches the news or reads the paper or reads the magazine, you become responsible or you have a part of what goes into that publication or that media. Uh, and that was extraordinary. I think what I've always loved about the gallery space, like even as a child and sometimes you know you were around sort of adult functions and you were told to be, you know, children should be seen and not heard and you were a loud, noisy child. I think especially the gallery, you know, all the spaces and what I also loved about the gallery space is it's very, I feel like it's very inviting. It's lovely to be in there and sort of look at the art and I think, you know, even though it's, it's not the biggest gallery in the world, um, I think it's just, you know, it 
it's a beautiful space to be in. It's lovely to go sit there and look at some beautiful artworks on the wall and get inspired by that or just and appreciate what you're seeing. Our biggest market is what we do locally here in Sri Lanka. I think that is crucial to everything that we are about. If we became just an, we only worked for export, or if we didn't have customers, local customers, I would begin to get very worried. If we became just a, a tourist shop, I think I would get terrified. Uh, I think, I, I, I try to reflect on the kind of place I might like to go and visit when I'm traveling. I certainly don't want to go to a place where only other travelers go. I would like to go and see where do the local people go. A comment we often get, especially on things like TripAdvisor and in the social media, is, oh, there's lots of, it's just lots of travelers and tourists here. Um, I think you might have, been able, might have been able to even observe for yourself today, it's an enormous mix of people. I mean, if you take this morning, it was lovely to see a group of students walk through. Um, that was not planned, that came out of the blue. There's another group of students coming tomorrow. We've got people from every walk of life out there, and I think that's really important. We ourselves are not selling anything that is traditional. We use a very old-fashioned means of making cloth, which is a simple hand loom, as you've probably seen on the back veranda. But I think what we're designing is absolutely contemporary. There's nothing about us that is traditional. Yes, we work with an extraordinary group of traditional weavers, and we've done that for 35 years. We worked with a gentleman called Somavansa, and we now work with his two sons. I think we've been, I think that's been a collaboration that is now I think it's over 30 years old. They are the weavers from Dumbara, from Uda Dumbara, and that's been a wonderful combination of us working together. We take over all their problems. We take over their problems of buying yarn, dyeing yarn, making sure it's right. They don't have to do any of that. We work with them. We don't ever interfere with the tech, their technique of weaving. We recognize what they do but our input is with design. Some of these things go back 45 years. I mean, there are craftsmen we've worked with who've, we've actually collaborated with them for as long as that. There's a gentleman who makes a special chair, a small chair, wonderful. 